Yes, yes, people, what is going on? We're back again. It's Graham History Lesson in the building. We've got the infamous, the one and only DJ Target. That's it, infamous, the bro. Infamous. I don't think I've been called infamous. The infamous to date. DJ Target. You like that intro? <laughs> I don't mind it, bro. It was good, bro. I like it. <laughs> What's going on? Look, we've basically had about a half an hour chat before. We've, we've had like, a, probably, if you'd been recording it, I think the bonus. Um, the bonus edition of what we're about to get into. We've just we've just had the long chat about a lot of stuff, but I warmed up now, so yeah, let's go. Same, bro. same. So let's um with you, I wanna go through everything. So I wanna go from the start with you. Where did you grow up and what was it like for you um, growing up as a young boy? Grew up in East London in Bow. Um I lived um people who know the area, I lived on British Street. Um probably till I was, well, in fact, when I was born, I lived in Poplar for a uh, first couple of years um, with my mum. And then I ended up moving in with my nan at around like five. Um, and then we moved to Devon's Road. And that's pretty much where I would class as the place where I, like, I grew up. Um, went from like a boy to a young man. Um, and all of this grime history happened while I was more or less living at Devon's Road. So what was it like in Devon's Road? Um, was it rough? Was it sort of the nicer part of East? Tell people what it was like if they don't know. Um, people, I guess from the outside, would say like rough, um, which for us was just like, it was normal. Um, you knew that people didn't have a lot of money. You could see there was like poverty in the area or whatever. Not, not to a degree like when we're talking about the the slums of, Lagos or like lots of places around the world but when we're talking about the UK um it was ends in it um a lot of people who like I said um struggling for money there was drug problems in the area uh, Tower Hamlets at the time had the highest youth poverty had the highest um youth unemployment so I guess when you look at the, st uh, the stats um things are kind of stacked against you but like I said for us it was just normal we it's not like we grew up knowing what it was like living anywhere else. So um, I really enjoyed it. it multicultural. You'd have a Chinese person to your left as a neighbor. You'd have the smell of like fish getting cooked up by the, the Nigerian lady. There'd be a Bangladeshi couple down below. Like it was proper mixed up. Um, and I think that's another thing that really helped to like build character and, and gave you culture, like gave like opened you up to other cultures before you could even travel outside of the UK. So was a community like together? Um it felt like it was together. Like you you also knew very early on that like there was trouble here and there. Um you know there's guys hanging around on the block. Well, I'm talking about when I'm really young. Um and yeah you hear things, you hear the police sirens and you hear about stuff that's happened or whatever. But um I would say mostly it's a pretty, it was a pretty tight knit community. Um, but yeah, just like any other kind of inner city, um, East London area. So what was your first interest? Like football, what was you, what was you into? Or was it always music for me to remember? It was music from early to be fair. Um, but music was just seen as something that you'd hear on the radio, I'd see on TV. Um, I'd watch Top of the Pops or whatever. I'd listen to the radio whenever when I could. Um, this is before I got into like pirate radio and stuff. I'm talking about really young age, but um, I was a fast runner. I was good at football. I was good at athletics. Um, I loved my sport. So from a very early age, I played football, played for um, the borough, played for a team called Semrab, um, which actually led Lee King and couple other dons played for all um, right yeah so i was i was, I was all right at football not not trying to be one of those guys that like i was gonna be a pro where well, was you um, a striker or um no i was like left wing left wing yeah yeah so Had a bit of pace on you yeah, well, yeah. Athletics and athletics you know yeah. what i mean but really my thing was actually high jump really like, yeah even though i'm saying i was a fast runner i was like in the relay team and i did 200 meters for a while but high jump i was just like sick at it and I became like champion of like the London schools I represented London schools and we did the English schools tournament yeah every year and there's only there's this one guy who used to beat me every year I used to come second in English schools um 
three years in a row. Um, I got scouted for like Blackheath Harriers. So I, it, that was becoming like a real thing. Um, only until probably I got to like 14, 15 and the athletics, um, they were called meetings. They were like the, 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 like a, a race day or whatever, where you had the events, or whatever, they were all over the country, but they'd be on a Saturday. So you'd have to leave on a coach at like 7am in the morning, go up to Coventry or wherever it is, stay there all day, compete, come back. By the time you've got back, all you're hearing about is like all the fun that the man there was having. Cause by now it's starting to be like girls are coming to the block and we're going to cinema for the day and fun fairs on and oh, there was a sick water fight. And I'm just like athletics is on most of these Saturdays are getting taken up. I'm going athletics. So I'm not going to lie. I just started to slack and I would stop going training. And as the more that was happening, this is just on the stroke of when I was getting into Pyro Radio. So we discovered Cool FM, discovered Jungle Music. And um, from there, the athletics and the sport just kind of just faded away. And my attention was just like on the music. And, and pretty much from there, like 14, just turning 15, it was like, I just want to, I want to be a DJ. So what made you want to become a DJ, just listening to Cool FM? Or was it the tunes or what was it that made you to stop athletics? I'm like, oh, would I be a DJ? It wasn't like I, I said, right, I'm going to stop athletics to be a DJ, but it was like, naturally, I was just getting pulled in that direction. Who was pulling you into that direction? No no one like specifically, but it was like, I, I discovered this music, jungle music. Like we all had, it was like, it was, it was taken over like, the area was like everywhere you you hear a van driving past, you'd hear jungle music and be playing from a bedroom window up there and everyone would be like, it's cool of him. So you knew very early on that and this is the place where to listen to the like the best DJs or whatever. And, and then you'd listen to Cool FM, you'd find your sets that you loved, you'd find your DJs that you loved. And um I just started studying it. And the more I did that, combined with I'm turning into like a like, I'm going through puberty, I'm a young man now, isn't it? So I'm more interested in going to find girls and I'm, I'm more interested in being back on the ends for the barbecue that's happening or the, the, do you know what I mean? So it's, it's a combination. It's not just like the music swept me away like in some kind of cheesy way, but the combination of me discovering Pirate Radio at the time when I'm trying to do what the man them are doing, the athletics thing is fun and I enjoy it because I was good at it, but... I feel like I could be good at this. Um, and they, yeah, the transition pretty much just happened like that. So, do you remember getting your first decks? How was you? So, obviously, you started listening to the music. Yeah. You started wanting to get involved. How did you actually get involved? How did you start mixing, buying records? Yeah, first, the, um, the, the actually, the, the decks thing, falling in love with decks and just DJ culture in general, um, like at the, around the same time as I'm as all of us are like enjoying like listening to Cool FM, I'm running home after school to make sure I got my blank tapes to record it and whatever else. Um, Wiley's introduced me to, I met Wiley, I'd met, I had met Wiley, um, I don't want to jump over that, I'd, I'd met Wiley through a close friend of mine who was his cousin. Um, I talk about it in my book or whatever, um, a few years earlier. So by now we're close brethren. We're both loving Cool FM and the whole jungle thing. And he's got a friend called Dean, who goes to his school. Slim. At the time, he's called DJ Slimfast. <laughs> he later became DJ Slimzy, but he took me around Slimfast's house. Never knew, I'd never met him. Um, so Slim's welcomed me in, whatever we met for the first time. And Slimzy's got decks in the, in his bedroom. Like, I'm just like, rah. Like, I can't, because the last time I saw decks was, I think Wiley's dad had a pair that Wiley somehow wasn't like managed to bring to his cousin Damien's house that we would just go on. No, Damien is Biggie's older brother. Right. Yeah. So Damien um, was my friend who introduced me to, to Wiley um, and Biggie was Damien's younger brother. Oh, okay. um, so yeah, last time I saw Dex, it was like in Damien's house. Did you I, get to go on them though? Yeah, I had a quick go. That's That was like raw. Had is, a quick go. Yeah, yeah. Like, but you don't know what you're doing. Like you're not mixing. It's just like, there's two things you're spinning them yeah, and yeah, you probably yeah, scratch yeah. the record or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So at Slimzy's, I'm seeing Slimzy like, or Slim Fast as he was called then, he's done a couple mixes and he's got tunes and I'm able to like put the tunes on and I'm putting on the needle and I'm like, oh, that's that tune I heard on whatever. And like, you're finally putting 
titles of songs to like songs you heard on the radio and like to me it's all exciting i'm just like i'm in a new element that i've never been in before and then i'm like you show me what you do and like that's the first kind of real go that I had. And from there, I was like, right, I need to go. And, I just need to go and start buying records. So I think it was either that weekend or the next weekend, might have had like a £15 to go to the record shop and buy like two, three records you can get for that. I think there was like a five or six quid then. Um, and the first one I bought was Leviticus Burial. And I think I got um, MB. Not, not, General Levy one, but he had a song before that called Style. I think I bought that one, and yeah, my two records. I went. I didn't have. A, I didn't have any decks. How <laughs> oh, you mix it? You just have to I go just around. Had, no, slims I just, or... no, I just had like a um, one. In them days, like a stereo hi fi. Yeah, a little yeah. hi fi thing. Yeah. But on top, it had the thinnest, like thin, crisp pizza slice of a <laughs> turntable. Yeah, thing. it was rickety and everything. But yeah, you play the record, and like I would just be like, I'd pretend it was a deck, and that was it. Um, for ages that was it um and then i think months and months later i think it might even be my birthday i'm not sure but i've ended up getting one sound lab belt drive turn just the one yeah just the one at first so i've set that up i've got a mixer as well so i've got the mixer and the one turntable yeah and no other deck so what i used to do is i used to put the radio on on call and then yeah. one mix with the other. Yeah, because the, the Hi-Fi had its own speakers and then I had my little one deck, one little mixer and one little speaker so, so I could hear it out. But, and I used to mix, try and mix or mix into the raid. Like I should basically mix and the other deck was just the radio that was playing. So I just mix into whatever they're doing. Wow. And that actually started getting quite good. I was doing some sick little mixes. And That's whatever. how you learn how to mix? Like re That was my first proper practice at home by myself because you know when you're by yourself you can mess up and you're not you can really get into it and that was the first thing I was doing I was mixing into the radio um and yeah that was it for a while and then eventually got another deck um another sound like belt drive um and at the time I was chuffed you know like you've got decks now the man that's coming around we're doing tapes them lot are MC and it was it was coming around at the time all my like so at the time it would have been like me. This is remember this is still school days, yeah. like early, early. So it would have like been me. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, yeah. That not, time, even, yeah. not even sixteen. Still okay. like, still just like maybe just fifteen, maybe. Right. Um, so it would have been like Wiley, Breeze, um, my brethren Junior, who was Caspit, um, Jet. Uh, who else? My other brethren Rudini. We had a thing called Fearless Six. Well, we was called SS Crew. SS Crew. Which originally was like, we had like this idea to be a sound system when we were really young. Because so many of the olders around us, um, not so much me, like family members, because I didn't really have like family around me like that, but like all the men them had uncles or older dads or whatever that had was a sound. sound system. Even like my mum, I didn't live with my mum, but she had a fella she was with, he had a sound system. So it was like sound system, sound system everywhere. So like by the time we're 13, 14, we like, we want to be a sound system. And all the sound system had names like, I don't know, it just had like names that sounded like sound system names. And we come up with a name called um, Silver Storm. Silver Storm. Yeah. So Peter, look, there's so much speculation about what SS crew meant because at the same time as this is happening, like we're young, we're still youths, but like SS Crew in the ends was like people were talking about SS Crew, not always musically. Oh, really? Yeah, like we're like we're in we're outside in the streets a little bit, and it's so and the girls are talking about us. It, okay, and, and it's like the man them and like we're getting into little fracases. Scuffles, and yeah, it's SS Crew, and we're at the house party, right. and SS Crew right, came, right, right, right. and you know, like it's it's turning into that. Like an SS Crew was like. You can ask any of the anyone <laughs> from where we was. Oh. That, that was the name that was like for our little age group. We was, that was the thing. Yeah, and then this is before we was on radio, so people just know us. It's on the roads and that for the parties. I'll tell you the roads, but we're so young. It's not like we're out there, but we are in the this streets. Isn't squad it? Yeah, that you're but we're known now. The isn't popular it? boys, like, we've said that. Yeah, we like on the streets. Yeah, yeah, and we like we go to the with. We're so young, we'd get into all the jungle raves somehow and like we'd have all like 
the Machino gums and Versace and whatever. And like, how was you, how was you affording all that? That's what I mean. Like, so like, there, however we could get it from summer jobs to trying to do anything we could outside that like maybe you shouldn't like to everything, getting a 50 quid off your like mum, giant, just mixing together everything you could to get in the gums, like whatever people had to do to do them, to get them, we, we got them. Uh. Um, and yeah, that was it. We was kind of just becoming a bit of a thing. And then we'd started to play at house parties in the end. So anyone's having a house party, like the hot chick, um, whose birthday is coming up, like she wants SS crew to come and play. So we would be doing that. That was our first, I guess, book it were charging, or maybe sometimes we might have charged like a little 20 quid or 30 quid. So we would be going there, borrowing some of these uncles and whatever's and, and thing. We'd be going and setting up. Oh, you'll be setting up? Yeah. Or they'd come and set up with us and like leave us to it. So we're, we're becoming, we're trying to do like a sound a little bit. And then we realize it's long because you've got to carry stuff and remember there's no whips. <laughs> yeah, no vans to load yeah, anything so up. Like, it's long, so we wanted to do the DJ thing, so we're just doing uh, making tapes or whatever else. Um, and yeah, that was that was the thing. Fearless Six was out of SS Crew, which was a bit was a bigger thing. Six, the six of us who was doing the it was like me and five MCs. We were within SS Crew. We were called like Fearless Six. Okay, and so that was um, the first kind of setup music setup um, that we had, and then. Not long after that, Rinse started. So Rinse and we, starts. And then we would be doing sets on Rinse. Like you can go on YouTube and there's sets with me and Caspit and Wiley and Jet and Rudy and whoever else. They were the first. Um, with, to be fair, we went on another station first first. What was that? Managed to get a show on a, a station called Chillin FM. Chillin FM. Yeah, yeah, which was in Hackney in Well Street. Not Well Street, Holly Street. Pre-gentrification. Like yeah, we've heard the stories about hell hole. FM, yeah, hell hole. So, you know, you said to me is was Bo rough? Yeah, like as rough as Bo might have been. Like when we was going to do these radio sets, I was saying bloody hell, bro, this is booky. Or what? That wasn't the was word. It late? What, what time was you late? On? Like one till three in the crackiest block in for it. Because remember, Bo to Hackney, you're crossing the border basically. In them days, it's like it's not safe, is it? Obviously, you're a, yeah, a we're Bo youths yeah. and like. No one knows us. We're just turning up in a in on in a block. You know, like there's no we shouldn't really be here, but yeah. we dying to be on the radio. So yeah, we have done a few of them. We, I think we done that for maybe three months. Um, we had to lie to the guys who ran it because you had to be seventeen. We're in, we're in school still. Um, so yeah, we did that for a while, and then G. I remember him saying to me, he's going to set up a station and then he called me and was like, yeah, we're ready to go. And that was it. We was on there. So he was on there straight away from straight the Straight away, yeah. I think maybe, if not the first day, the first weekend um, doing the jungle thing. So you get on Rinse, you run one of the first crews on there. How did Rinse start progressing? What was the journey like in the first year? All of us, it was like, we want to be like Cool FM or as big as Cool FM. And we were just like the, the generation down from them lot. So we was like just all young and just energized. And all it's like Cool FM had all the kind of cream of like jungle DJs and MCs, but we were like the breeding ground, the next generation. And all of us was like, we couldn't compete with them in terms of like their names and they were getting booked for all these raves and whatever, but Rinse started just serving like Bo and then it was growing and it was growing and like the names were starting to just ring off and like everyone on there was just doing sick shows and before you knew it, like then there was Rinse raves and I remember doing, um, it was called Labyrinth on Dalston. I think it's where the train station even is now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, did a, a thing in there and then they did a, and under 18s and there was it was just like within a couple well not even within a couple of years within like a year cool fm was definitely looking over and thinking hang on a minute like they're hearing a lot about rinse it's like do you know what i mean it's we've become we're, we're, we're buzzing and um yeah that was that was the start of rinse really being a thing but then not too long after that maybe another about maybe another couple of years yeah 
a lot of us just kind of came off the jungle thing right and started to like slide over towards garage so let's take it back a bit so you're, you're djing did you start making jungle tunes yeah actually yeah we are yeah yeah sorry there's so many yeah, things yeah, yeah. But i forget so one of my close friends gifford um dj trend all right Pete. rest in peace to my brother um he later was known as tnt but before he was known as tnt he was going to a community studio in the ends um some guy used to end up leaving him the keys and he went in and just learned how to use all the equipment and knew his way around the studio we we're in year 10 and that so i mean year 10 yeah bro he's like he knows how to use a studio so he's like come down i can't remember the guy's name now um but he the guy would leave him the keys we could go in there like maybe overnight or sometimes it'd be in the daytime but i would just go in there and sit and just watch gifford doing his thing sampling things doing things like going on logic i'd never seen logic before like this is all brand new to me but he's he's putting stuff together he's making stuff and it's sounding good do you know what i mean like from from where i'm from where i'm sitting he's, he's onto something then he's like let's make a tune together the first tune we made together like remember he knows what he's doing i just know vibes in it at this point you i know don't, what a good tune is no yeah I, mean, I, I don't know technically how to do anything but turn on the keyboard and i can press you know yeah, what i mean yeah, i can yeah, press yeah. the thing so like that that was kind of he was doing he was setting stuff up technically i was playing stuff in he would play stuff in he would do the technical he would like draw in the high hat he would like basically we made this tune together and the tune we made together was two degrees that was the first tune yeah that was the only tune we never made another jungle tune together that was it we made this one tune together then we thought what can we call ourselves trend and target tnt and then he said ah oh, tnt trend and target so we was like six so then we had this one tune we started playing it on rinse obviously first you could tell straight away the tune was like getting a mad reaction mm. and then um like a couple of the cool djs i think hit up gifford and was like wanted to cut dub plates of it and oh really yeah and then a couple weeks later nikki black market called somehow and was like he wanted to meet us remember this is like you still in school yeah it was still in school this is all still in, it's young bruv um and Nicky Black Market and these guys are heroes, do you know what I mean, to us. So we've gone to Black Market Records, we've met him, told us he wants to sign the tune to his label. We started a new label called Cartoons. He wants it to be the first release, blah, blah, blah. All I'm hearing is Nicky Black Market loves our tune. I don't, like, at this point, no, the money is not even, I think we got like, don't quote me, but maybe 300 quid or, might have been even five. A lot of money back then, though, isn't it? I remember thinking, oh, that's it. But then this t this vinyl sold oh. bare copies, bro. But listen, there's no hard feelings. Big up Nicky Black Market as well forever. But um, we just didn't know any business, to be fair. Um, so, yeah, he's, he signed the tune. He's then took it on and given it out to his network, which is the big boys, isn't it? So remember, we're going to these jungle raves. We're in the jungle raves now. We're just hearing the tune coming in every minute, every set. The big, the, the our big DJs that we've been listening to and that Brocky and this one and that one, like, they're all playing our tune in the rave, the big rave. How are you feeling when like you're hearing bro, it tumbling in these raves, bro? It's crazy. And you're in the crowd, or bro? You... Yeah, we're in the crowd, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Remember, we're just youths in the crowd <laughs> as well. So people, we're looking around, everyone's going mad to our tune. We're Do just you people in... know that you've made it? No, no one knows. Like, we're just going mad, but people people just thinking this, just some kids going mad. But kids, we're going yeah. extra mad because we're thinking this this is our rhythm. So, yeah, that happened and that was it. And Gifford carried on. He by, he just carried on making tunes. He was making bare jungle tunes and Nicky Black, like giving them to Nick and they was, they was all just blowing up. He started his own label and he said to me, like, can I carry on the name TNT, but I'm going to give it a new meaning, um, treading new territories. And I said, yeah, of course, bro. And he just, he, he, he obviously took on the name TNT and had spare tunes out from jungle to garage to more or less grime, grime as well, yeah, yeah. all under TNT. So I get why people wouldn't even fathom why, how I was involved in Two Degrees. And I always say to people, because people are like, oh, you was in two, TNT? And I'm like, no, 
Gifford was. Yeah, but you just yeah, made two yeah, degrees yeah, with but him. Yeah, that one tune, which happened to just be a mad classic. So why didn't, so the tune is pumping. Yeah. Why didn't you take advantage and carry on with it? Mem also, this has happened, like we've made that one tune, Gifford's just like, he's literally like a technical G in the studio. I'm turning up sometimes and like, are you like, still I'm not, around? I'm still the not really like taking it serious. Yeah, not the making tunes, but well, yeah. After like, you I just know, made two yeah, degrees. I know, and, like, I know, yeah. I know. It's it's mad, but um, and then like I was saying, not probably a year after two degrees, maybe I did go in and try a couple things, and they were shit or whatever. That, okay, that might have happened as well. Mm. But I don't, I don't remember making like jungle tunes yeah. after that. Maybe one or two, but nothing significant. But yeah, a couple years, a year after that. Garage is coming, come, come around. Jungle's turning to drum and bass, and he wasn't into it. The girls it. kind of we have to remember we were at, we're still so young and like it's just all about the way the girls are and the like. And Jungle used to bring a certain vibe to the raves, and then drum and bass was sounding not as like I don't know, not as fun to us. It was getting a bit like industrial sounding. But was like the crowd raves like? were starting to look feel different. We just was like, this is getting a bit, like, I don't know. We just weren't really. And then one of our other mates, actually Rudy, who was one of the MCs, Rudini, he was like, bro, I've been to a garage rave with my older uncles. He said, bro, if you see how many girls are in these raves and like the vibes, it's, it's just sick and everyone's drinking champagne. And we're like, what? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, everyone wears shirts and shoes. And we was like, no, no, that's dead. Yeah. Like, cause remember, we're still going out and like, Moschino club, but it's not like smart dress. It's more Crazy like Moschino street. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So the whole vibe, other than he said there was loads of girls, which obviously when you're that age, you're like well, that sounded interesting. The music hadn't grabbed us yet, and I remember one day I was hearing bits and bobs here and there of Garage, and I was like, oh, that's, I like kind of like that tune, and that one's right. And then one day, Jet Jet Lee, yeah, I was in his house, and he played me. At the time, I loved the Brandy and Monica song. Boy is mine. The original. The original. Yeah. And he knew that. And he said, bruv, listen to this remix, bro. You're gonna love this. And he played me the um architects, Brandy and Monica. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. dun, dun. I said, wait a minute. Yeah. I said, this yeah. is the vibes, bro. And he said, bruv, they played this in the rave the other day. He, like, he sold this whole scene to me. And I was like, no, nah, that sounds sick actually. And then from there, that was like this. I always remember that moment, like being in his house, he played the thing, and I remember thinking, right, this I really like this one. And then everyone's talking about this DJ EZ. EZ, EZ, ah, oh, bruv, EZ, yo, you got this DJ EZ, da 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 da. So eventually, maybe a month, two months has gone past, there's a big rave coming up at Coliseum. DJ EZ's on it. They, the ones who have already dabbled, they've convinced us all to like come to the garage rave. Got to hear this DJ EZ. Some of these tunes, it sounds like it could be vibes. We've gone out. Re, re, re readjusted the, the dress code, gone and got some Patrick Cox shoes. Yeah, yeah. got a little shirt, straight the jeans out a bit, <laughs> <laughs> and went to the rave. And fucking hell, bro. What was it like? First time at Coliseum? Couldn't believe it. I felt like I was in heaven. To what, be honest, of the music or the girls like the or whole everything, thing, like everything, like just when you pulled up in the queue. They had two queues, they had a guy's queue and a girl's queue, innit? You're watching the girl's queue thinking. It went so far, 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 far. We don't re we hadn't really been South London raving like that. So it's a whole it feels like you're in a new world a little bit. New music, new people, new club, new new garms on, new everything's yeah. like it's new. So that's it. We got into the rave. It's it's just the sickest vibe. Like it's just did happy. it sell you? But did the music was it? The yeah, music the music. As well, like the it? music's going off. A couple of MCs are on Viper and that. It's like it's vibes. Like there's playing rhythms. There's, it's happy. Like it feels like there's no bad energy in there. Like everyone's dressed up. The girls are dressed up to the nines. The guys have to match that. Like it felt raw. Like it felt like grown a bit because we were still young, but this felt grown. Do you know what I mean? A bit more. Mm. And then I remember. Are you ready for the DJ? He's in. And everyone just like, you could tell the whole rave just got ready. To, yeah, yeah, okay. And I remember thinking, right, let's get ready yeah, for yeah, whatever yeah. this is, bruv. And that was it. So then Key. do you go to the record shop? Next day. Start 
by Gary. Next day. The next day. Because I by this point I'd stopped doing jungle. I actually stopped stopped buying records. So what so you was you still on radio? I think this might have even been the period where Rinse came off air for okay. six months. It might have been then. I can't remember exactly, but I definitely was but just you like, weren't doing radio. Weren't bothered, weren't doing radio. Or I, even if I was doing my set show, I weren't interested as much. I weren't going record shop frequently. Um I was just about to move house because my nan died and I remember calling Dizzy and saying, because he'd been buying records off me. What? Records in your box he didn't want anymore? To me, yeah, but to him they were like, it was like we were both happy because I, I could get rid of songs that maybe I didn't really want or I had doubles and he was oh, like, okay. he was just getting tunes. And was he from your area? Dizzy lived across the road from me, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I've just yeah, jumped yeah, into yeah, something yeah. else. I've just, yeah, yeah. But yeah, apparently, so Dizzy was... He lived across the road. He'd been coming. One day, just knocked on my door. I didn't know him. Introduced himself and was like, I just want to buy some tunes. And we just built this like rapport. He'd come and buy tunes. And then I remember phoning him and saying, you can just, however much you can take, carry, you can come and get. And he was like, what? I was like, bro, yeah, just come. And he just literally, he was there like quick, ding dong. And that was it. I think he might have done even a couple of trips. And he just yeah. took as much as he had could he still got them i spoke to him the other day about it yeah um and that was how like, i was like with jungle i was like i think i'm, I'm done, done a, bit. a bit and shortly after this whole garage thing happened and yeah saw he's a next day i'm like no and now i know I, I need to do this what i just seen what i just seen this guy do is what i need to try and do so straight to rhythm division so you you come back on radio you're playing Garage now. Yeah, but then that's the thing. And most of the ones who were like from my generation, that age group who were like really young in jungle school, we've come we've come out of school now. Garage is swept through. So they're playing it as well? So Rinse is now becoming a garage station. Do you know what I mean? So we're it's everyone's kind of on that same wave. Like we're all G's probably now playing Garage. Slim's probably edging into Garage. Like we're all doing it. So how long was you playing Jungle and Rinse for? About a year? No, more than a year. Couple, like At least a couple of years. At least I'd a couple say. of years. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then now you're playing Garage. Who was you? Was it the same crew? Like what was going on now then? Obviously the, the so, music's yeah. changed. So what happens First, now? First, it weren't even a crew. And then I just still okay, had, a show, I just had a show. Like got my show back or whatever. Or just carried on doing. I can't remember how, but I had a show. Wiley was still with me. Yep. Um, Wiley was also kind of DJing at the time. Like, he'd dabble in and DJing, but he'd also go on the mic. Maxwell, who we'd been, he'd done some jungle sets with us back in the day. We met at college. You and Maxwell? Yeah, he was going out with a girl who lived in the ends, who was one of our like girls from the ends. So she was like, oh, I'm going out with this boy, Denzel. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> got to yeah. meet him. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we met oh, him. Right. We really got on. And it happened, just so happened, he was Nicky Slim Tings. It's crazy because the names are still about Slim Ting. Yeah, Slim Ting, yeah, 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 yeah. He was a DJ. He was, Maxwell was his MC. Oh, was it? They were both from Leighton. Right. Oh, yeah, cool. So they're yeah. brethren from before. So he, Maxwell was originally Slim Ting's MC. We've met. Maxwell started doing sets with me and Wiley in Jungle. Yep. Fast forward. It's Garage now. Maxwell went to prison. By the time he's come back out, it's Garage. So he's kind of just jumped on the Garage wave. I don't know where Slim Ting is at this point, but Maxwell just come and joined on with me and Wiley. So me, Wiley and Maxwell are doing sets. At this point as well, Garage is like ran by like female reaction and what the girls like is like, that's, that's what Garage felt like it was catering for the females. Yeah. And so that's what you're, that's what the, the tunes are sounding like. The, the reaction on the radio station is girls, 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 throwing up, throwing up. So we just ended up calling ourselves ladies. This is, this is where I wanted to get to. <laughs> Do you yeah. know how funny that name is when I think about it and why we thought we could call ourselves that? Why? Because why? that's, like, this is what it says. Ladies hit squad. Like, we thought we was eligible to be called that at that time. Did it work? Yeah, bruv. It was happening. Like, it started to, like, very quickly start popping. Um... Look, Skepta had a whole tune called Lady Skip yeah, Squad. Yeah, exactly. Ten years later, bro, it became mini legendary. If he was around, you would know. Um, but before it got to really fly off, at the same time as Lady Skip Squad happening, uh -huh. Slimzy and Major Ace and God's Gift and Plague and Genius, they're starting, they're doing shows. 
S double P or after that actually, wasn't it? Sim around just after S double P, yeah. Plague, Paco, but just after that, they're doing shows together and then on a Sunday, one day they're doing a show, the phone network for pay as you go um went down. So not went down, it went free. So everyone could everyone was just phoning each other for free. I remember that it was like a craze in the head. It was like, oh my God. Well, just on that one day? On this one Sunday, it was like, everyone, I paid. And so when they're on the show, everyone's ringing in the texting and saying, oh, it's free, it's free. My page goes free, page goes free. That happens while they're on air. Next Sunday, like all through the week, it's back to normal. Following Sunday, they're on air again. It's happened again. That thing's happened again, bro. Pay as you go, pay as you go. So, so like, the messages are coming into the show. Pay as you go. So, I think it happened for two weeks, maybe three. Yeah. And they, it, it became, right, Sunday's the pay as you go show. Do you know what I mean? That's how so it that's started. So, pay as you go came. It was the pay as you go show first, like, because this is the show on the Sunday when, do you know what I mean? It, e. it, so, then that quickly became, like, just pay as you go crew and then, that was already that them as a group was already popping off and then with the name attached the buzz was grew so quick oh my god uh, there's a show on the page you sick da, da, da. so that was all happening lady six squad's happening separately we just had a conversation i was like shall we just team because remember so solid's like a big crew there we can we know about what's happening in south london south. and we're like shall we just team up and make a big crew whose idea was that G's or Major Ace between G and Major Ace because you was already mates with them lot yeah right? we all knew each other we'd all kind of grown up together some of us went to school like me and Ace went to the same school we knew Plague from Jungle Days Genius we grew up with Slimzy obviously we knew from time went to was Wiley's close close brethren like all of us knew each other God's Gifts from Bo we'd grown up together from school from families all knowing each other so it weren't like a, we didn't know that to meet. We was all brethren. It just made sense. Yeah, and plus we was like, imagine we just team up. Like, it would be so sick. And so we was like, right, let's team up. And then we were like, wow, well, what do we call ourselves? And because the page go thing was, it was really starting to catch a buzz. We just said, all right, we'll just leave Lady Sit Squad the name. Because that name, when we named it, it was kind of like a temporary. And we just thought, let's quickly name so ourselves. So you scrapped that. We just scrapped. And you scrapped your show, and you. All... No, we kept that show. We kept it. It became another pay as you go show. Oh really? Yeah, that that was the thing that pay as you go had a strength of. We had three DJs. That's what I was gonna all say. All three DJs had a show at rinse. Okay, okay. So they cool, was all. Cool. They Sunday was the like, was always known as the main pay as you go show because of how three it started. Five, yeah. yeah, but Genius had a show on a maybe a Tuesday night. We had a Sunday nine to eleven, so they was all pay as you go shows. And the, where I had Wiley and Maxwell, and once we joined up, Ace would come through my show. Whoever play G show might be God's gift and play one day. Da, 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 Sunday they probably slim. all come through for Slimzy show. Yeah. So like, it's fr already you're we're, flooding the airways. Yeah, we're flooding it, and yeah. then we took that to the clubs. So we got an agent. Sarah, Sarah, yeah, Sarah, talent. Yeah, talent. Yeah, 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 yeah. At the time, she was like the the go to agent. She said, "Right, you know, look, I can get you a lot of bookings everywhere." We was like, "Yeah, cool." Or whatever. Like we kind of was like a bit. She said, like, "Give me a week." Within a week, bro, she sent this itinerary through. Not in Manchester, did, 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 bam, 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 and then it was like iron up, iron up, iron up, iron up, iron up, really, she, straight away, bro. Because no, but this is I've. I'm jumping a little bit, but this is maybe like three, four months after this page goes, Pez. link ups happened. We're doing And you're beating down the airwaves. We're beating down the airwaves, we're beating down the local clubs, little Ilford, a thingy there. Yeah. The word is spreading like wildfire. So she's jumped on and just done what she does. And we're we're about to be like everywhere, all over the country. So I wanna talk about um the shows quickly. So in the early days in terms of the page you go, you was known for playing more of the softer garage. No, is that no. is that shit? No, no, I'm not honest. <laughs> the moist, the moist. No, one. no, 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 no. No, but Honestly. to be totally fair, hundred percent. Remember, I've come from being Lady's Hit Squad. I've come from loving R and B. We've mentioned that before. Yeah. Like, if anything, out of the three DJs, like hundred percent, I would be. I definitely would play more tunes for the girls. G was probably in the middle. Yeah. As Slimzy was always dark. Wanted. There wasn't really that much dark garage, but he wanted the bass and he wanted. He weren't really. He would play stuff for the girls as well, but it weren't that. Do you know what I mean? So we did have like we had a range 
But any of the clubs, it's time to mash up the clubs as well, isn't it? So as much as on the radio, I would do a section so you wouldn't for the, play that. No, I wouldn't, but like, it's like when you go to the clubs, as much as you're definitely still thinking about the girls, it's like, it's a slightly different mission. Like, do you know what I mean? So there were certain tunes that were universal, like the girls and the guys. It's not like you're playing tunes and it's only men them or all only girls. But there were a lot there were a lot of female vocal songs that you would definitely play on the radio, but you might not necessarily play them all in the club. Mm. Um but yeah, we had we could go to three places in one night. We could be in Coventry and Nottingham and Southampton, page you go, page you go, page you go, mashing up all three. So Southampton, Nottingham and wherever all go home and say, page you go, mash it up. They, Sometimes they don't even know which DJ was on. They just they just know we was in there and you got three of the two or three of the MCs and it was yeah, there's enough for you to spread around, yeah, isn't there? And everywhere we went, it was just like like curtains. So like was see it like the early days pay as you go, was there a certain batch of MCs like maybe GIF, Wiley, was there certain MCs that you would sort of do more sets with, or was it all just spread around? It was spread around, but I think I'd definitely done more with Ace, Maxwell and Wiley, probably. You probably got like Plague, I feel like it would be slimmed up be more with G or Slim. Gift the same. Yeah. Ace would kind of like alternate. What about like, Everyone kind of mixed and blended, but okay. like I feel like because Wiley and Maxwell was my original radio MCs, Ace was like often drained onto that. Like we just had a little bit of a unit going on but then sometimes promoters would book they would ask for certain people certain promoters would be like i have to have plague or i, I need god's gift and thingy so we would have a sarah would just sort it out basically yeah. she would just say right it's you three there it's you three there you three are there boom 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 when it was i and Napa, it was all of us so we just flew out we that's another thing like we couldn't we didn't realize like right we've hit the we're getting booked at Sun City and the Cosa Nostra and um, these are the raves that you was like, try, you, now, you wanted to go to these raves like a year ago. Remember the first time I went to Napa, it was before Ladies Hit Squad, I think, weren't even, hadn't even started. By the next year, when I went back to Napa, we'd done Ladies Hit Squad, we joined with Pay As You Go and that summer, Pay As You Go had its own rave in Napa. So within that, this is all that I've just said from that Ladies Hit Squad to, that's, it's only one year. One year. Yeah, but the following year, it was, we had our own nights and we was played, we'd done Sun City, we'd done Cosa Nostra, we'd done that and then Castle Club gave us our own residency and it was like all happening. And then but Garage was going crazy. So Solid was number one for 21 seconds. That was all that same summer. Um, but yeah, it was wildfire. And then we started to do tunes. Obviously we had Noe and we had a couple of others. And yeah, so when you start getting books now, is this like you're you're thinking this is going to be your career? Or is it still a bit of fun? No, but this is the career now. Like when you when you join up with Sarah. Yeah, once we join up with Sarah, I'm probably like I'm still yeah. I've just moved. I'm like eighteen, nineteen, maybe. Where did you move to? Quickly. I moved to South. Oh, you moved to South. Curveball. Where did you move to? Basically, I moved to Crystal Palace. Crystal bro. Palace, yeah. Crazy, like Gypsy Hill, like Gypsy Hill, <laughs> yeah, yeah, on the on the a Central Hill Estate, bro. Yeah, that laying was, low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is the thing. I didn't know where I was moving to, firstly. I'd never been to Crystal Palace in my life. And the, everyone's like, well, how did you move to South? Because I remember I said I didn't live with my, I lived with my nan in the East. But my mum lived in Brixton. Okay. So what that made, it made me eligible to put my name down for two councils. Oh, so you've done it like that? So I put my name down for Tower Hamlets for a flat this, mm. and put my name down for Lambeth for a flat. And for some reason... Lambeth come Lambeth, back to you first. No, Lambeth messed up and they had me on a homeless list. Oh, so that's better so than you did, isn't it? Bro, they came through enough quick. And it's mad because the day that I got sent the offer for the flat was the day my nan died. Oh, wow. So wow. it was almost like, raw timing. And so I ended up moving. To, I didn't want to stay in that house, well, the flat where I like, was living with my nan. Memories you know, of like, yeah, yeah. I was only young. It was like too yeah. much. So I said, I need to move out. Got offered the flat in Crystal Palace. And I moved there, bro. I didn't even know what I was doing. It was miles away. I was waking up every day and getting a two trains and a bus and a tube to come and hang around on a block for 10 hours. 
Wow. <laughs> that was like literally what I was doing until I got a car. So you just, I yeah. got a car soon after that, but yeah. So now... But yeah, sorry, to go off piste, once we started to do the Sarah thing, I was realizing... It's right, a career we're now. Get, yeah, because we're getting... I think at first, from the beginning, like it was a grand for a book it to book pay as you go. So there's three of us going, we're getting 300 quid. Might get, if there's four, you might get 250, but you're doing them. And you get a couple a week. Yeah, easy. Easy. Three, four a week, two a week minimum. Yeah. That's and between you're only all young. you de- like, you're only young. Two a, two a week, you're, you as a DJ. Yeah. So let alone. Uh, I might be getting 300 quid, 300 quid, 300 quid, 300 quid in one week. I mean, I'm still only young. I'm getting like earning maybe over a grand in a week. So then that's ideal. That's easily a career, bro. Yeah. No one had getting no 50 grand jobs then at all. Yeah. So, yeah, it started and that was like... Was you was good like, with money? I was, I was all right with money. I've heard Wiley you was, was, was Wiley a saver, saver in you. Wiley he always says you're a saver. Like, this guru, bro. No, no, I'm not a saver, you know. Like, but I'll break I heard that you taught people how to save. I think. No, do you know what I did? I just thought, I just clocked ways that you could use your money better than just wasting it. It's not necessarily saving. Like, but you'd always put some away. I heard that check- you'd always put some away. You would spend money, but you'd always put some away. That like when see, I, I moved to that flat in Crystal Palace. First check we got from Page Go, I bought that flat. Oh, did you? Yeah. Did you? Bought it. No one went on all that then because we were still young. Do you know what I mean? But how I old said, was you then when you bought your flat? Might have just twenty one, twenty, twenty one. Yeah, young for that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I because I'd lived there a couple of years already, and I had the. There was a thing called right to buy back then, and you could build it up for how long you lived in a council property. But yeah. I took my nan's one, like the time I'd lived there, that came over with oh, me. Oh, did it? So I ended up getting a really good discount, and I just bought the flat for crazy cheap. Yeah. Like crazy cheap, about 50 bags or something. And then but they. But you sold that now, innit? Bro, let's not go into that. Yeah. But it definitely didn't sell for 50 grand. Crystal Palace. Yeah, of course not. No, yeah, no I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> that's why I get hailed as like this guru. But I just always, the one thing I did, I knew, I always knew how to make money. So when we was outside, I could hustle up money. If it was, I, if I needed to get, I had a couple of little jobs for very short periods. Like I, I would get, sort it and do, make the money. And when I got money, I would try and spend, make more money basically and that was it and i think because i'd made those couple early moves and like people saw the benefits of them later i think that's why people think i was good with money but i I just see it as i just took took a left where someone might have took a right because yeah. i just clocked things a bit earlier on and i thought to myself, if i ever get in a position of any sort of money maybe i'll just try and do that or i'll I don't want to just waste money. Um, and I think luck as well. Things just have to be on your, like you have to, I had to be in that position to accidentally get that flat. I shouldn't even have been given that flat. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They had me as home. Like all those things have to line up. I made that move. It put me in a good position to be able to do other stuff later on. Do you know what I mean? So, but I'm not the greatest with money. I'm not like a crazy saver like that, to be honest. Yeah. I know, but there was one time Wiley found my save. I think Wiley saw my saving pot and it had, <laughs> I'd saved bare bread in it as well one day. So I, was, I think <laughs> I've given Wiley reason to believe yeah. that. <laughs> but no, I, yeah, I don't know. So we were talking about it turning into a career now. Like, yeah. It's getting serious now. You're, you're getting booked everywhere. Yeah. What's happening to the page you go name? Because obviously you're saying so solid or about oh yeah yeah what heartless about yeah yeah heartless was about first yeah um but so solid are about but they're having mad commercial success like they're having number one they broke open the doors they're shooting crazy videos they've changed the game it's a new day like we're still at busting up the clubs <laughs> and like we've got noe out which is sick but they've just come and done the madness yeah. so now we're like okay we need to level up. What made you guys start doing tunes? This, this is what I'm saying. We're not doing tunes. We was, we was making tunes already. Remember, we, we've made Earth Warrior and Eskimo and Creeper and that is that era. So there's tunes getting made, but we're not thinking. Pay as you go. 
Well, like, I mean, the people in Pejago. Oh, making, yeah, yeah, no, but I'm talking about... As Pejago. Yeah, as Pejago. Yeah, 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 we'll start talking about... Well, we made yeah, yeah. No We, but that wasn't even made as a Pejago song. It gets... Yeah, that was a bit of Roll deep ish wasn't it? Well, it was because... It was the Pejago MCs. It was like Gift, Maxwell, Wiley, and Major Ace. Yeah. But it wasn't... It, when Wiley made it, it was just a day when he was in the studio and they was there. But it turned into a Pejago tune. Like, that was one of the tunes that everyone hailed as, like, a Pejago tune. So, but they, these were tunes for the clubs... And for Pirate Radio and... What other tunes was getting made around then, Pejago tunes? There weren't Pejago tunes really like that. That's what I mean. There wasn't? There wasn't really. Like, No We was made. I don't think there was a dedicated Pej... Like was there was it? that other one. Uh, there was one that came out on like a, a blue garage, vinyl or There was or one that came out on a, a garage compilation. Um, that dark tune. If it was about Pejago... That's what I mean. There might have been a couple yeah, being yeah. made, but there was nothing... And then when we saw what So Solid were doing, mm. we was like, right, we need to, we need to do, we need to actually consciously go and make some page you go songs that can do, that we need to be able to do this. Like they've set a new foundation. They've just set a new blueprint. Then um, what comes and where does Champagne Dance come that's in? That's when Champagne, the first song we go and make is Champagne Dance. Like the first song we say, right, we're going to the studio, guys, to make our pay-as-you-go thing. We want to go and get signed as well. Like, we're going to go and make a pay-as-you-go song with a chorus and a thing, da 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 Here we go. Like, that's we went in and that was the first song we made. So who made that tune? Me and Genius produced that. So was she really producing at that time? Like, Oh, yeah, yeah. But remember, I've, we've done, I've done Earth Warrior. I've done Earth, I'm doing underground bits yeah, and bobs. Yeah, we'll talk about that as well. Yeah. She's doing underground bits yeah. and bobs. We weren't producing, like, kind of big songs or whatever. But we were like, right. You we, had Earth Warrior there, didn't you? 2001. That, yeah, yeah, so this is when we made Champagne Dance. Yeah. That year, that same year. That same year. Okay. So, but we weren't making songs in that vein. But there was loads of songs that was getting made in the studio, but probably hardly any of them ended up coming out. You yeah. might, might have heard some of them on set back then even, but... 2001, we're talking yeah, about, but yeah. Yeah, Earth Warrior was like the one... Come out of One that year that actually came out, was released. It was yeah. like doing... It was quite big. Everyone kind of talks to me about it. Yeah. Wiley heard Earth Warrior and when I made Eskimo. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is like... He absolutely done my dance with that. But he, he heard that. I played that to him. He already was playing with Gliding Squares. About three days later, he said, ah... Oh, I've made one. It's a bit like your thingy. <laughs> I don't think it sounds like no, it. Doesn't it doesn't sound bro, like it at all. It doesn't have nothing like it, but somewhere in his creative brain, like it must have had some kind of little inspiration. But like I said, when he played me Eskimo, I said, bro, have you, have you heard, are you hearing what you've just done there? And that was the end of that. Well, when you made Earth Warrior, in your head, do you know this is not Garage? Not really. I just know that in the pretty, club, very different. Yeah, but it's like it sounds very different from like. It sounds like a genius tune a little bit, a tiny bit. The same similar sounds. I don't know. Maybe yeah, maybe a, a little, little bit, bit. Yeah, but I think it was because we weren't thinking of creating a new genre, or there was going to end up being a grime. Like we didn't have that context, so it was like what kind of garage am I making today? It was more like that. And I'll, I'm making the kind where I've been hearing on our MCs like, like I want to make one of them tunes for the MCs. So yeah. that's how they all started. It was like making rhythms now for more for the MCs rather than for a female vocal to go on it. We never really made any of the songs like that, to be fair, um, to that point. So it was more like I just want to make a, like something that's a bit darker. Do you remember when you made it? I remember when I made it. Yeah, I was in Nick's studio. Okay, or Bazzi. Yeah, uh, no, it was in Greenwich then. Oh, Greenwich, sorry, back um, Greenwich. Yeah. Not Greenwich, Bermondsey. Sorry, Bermondsey, that's the one. And it's fa it's funny because Nick, we made Champagne Dance in Nick's studio. But oh, okay. Nick's old studio in Greenwich, tiny little room, and we we only met Nick by accident as well. We was working in another guy's studio called Danny S. He happened to be going on holiday for like four weeks or going away for four weeks. He was like, I ain't going to be here. We we're like, well, whose studio can we use? No, let me tell the story properly. Yeah. We was making a tune, me and Danny's brother, Don P. Don P, yeah. We were making an R&B tune. That's what I mean. He's, I was doing, like side, I was doing side things, projects as well, but he was a vocalist from time. So we were making R&B tunes. We needed some scratching in a song, like a, a scratching sample. The guy Danny said, my bridge and Nick, 
down the corridor he does scratching why don't you go and check him so we've gone and checked him he ended up doing the scratching we've used it in the song Bob's your uncle that's it when Danny said he's going to hot this Danny guy from the studio not Danny Weed um, Danny yes he said he's going away whose studio can we use Dan oh why don't you go and see Nick the guy who did the scratching he's got a studio don't you remember da, 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 da. so we've gone and see Nick oh mate can we use your studio we'll pay whatever he said cool First time we've gone in this studio, we made Champagne Dance. So then he said, I know some people at Labels. Oh, really? Yeah, so you can oh, see... Oh, so Nick was like, bro, involved with Champagne Dance. How yeah, did go? Yeah. Okay. Um, Nick got us the deal. Nick, could, we, you, we didn't know no one at no labels. That's what I was going to ask. How did the... Okay, you, you go to U and G, make this tune. Well, we all, went, we all went there that day together to make the tune. So Dom so, P's come, Major Rays, yeah. we're all in the room. They're all sitting there while we're making the Why beat. Why did you get Dom P on the tunes for... Because you wanted a vocalist on it. Yeah, we said we wanted to have a chorus. Let's get Dom on it. Da, 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 da. Or maybe he wasn't going to definitely be on that tune, but he came studio. He came, yeah. So they're, they're sitting there while we make the beat. Maybe, I think Dom was there from early, so he was definitely there when we made the beat. I think Ace came. The others might have come later, but we're there making the beat. We're trying to make something that's a little bit more commercial. We're thinking of like getting signed and whatever else. So, but we still want it to be our vibe. We don't want to just make anything. So, um, yeah, we've cooked up that beat very quick, very quick. And Dominic's done the, the, the hook. And then that's it. Ace done his, I think Ace done his verse. And mm. then it just built from there and then worked on it a little bit, started playing it on our sets. Oh, by now, I remember Page Ago is hot property. So, People are hearing this tune when you're playing our radio. If there's a new page you go to and people are like listening. Oh, was you playing it in the clubs as well, obviously? Yeah, playing in yeah. the clubs as well. Smashing was, the club? Yeah, it was working everywhere. So then we ended up getting a deal. Sony signed it. Um, was, it, it was it big money? Well, for them times, I think it was like 100 bags or something for a song. So in them times... And, and Nick got you the deal? Nick, I think, I'm sure Nick got us the deal. Yeah, Nick got us the deal. He was like, he became like our manager. Was automatically so yeah, because he was like in their play. the manager was like, but he he knew the guys at the label, introduced us, whatever. I think he done he he dealt with in the music industry stuff before a little bit. Um, and he wasn't a manager; he was just like a hip hop fan. Mm. But he knew some guys who knew label stuff. Um, so that was it. And then he ended up managing us, and off the back of that, he's we're using his studio. We're going back and forth into his studio. Somewhere in this equation, there's a Dizzy Rascals coming to the studio of us, isn't it? And then he's obviously spotted that this guy is not normal. And then they've kind of made a bit of a more of a bond. And Nick's ended up becoming later on down the line. It's obviously it's Nick and Dizzy that ah. um, went off and did Dirty Stank and did the whole we'll thing talk together. About that as yeah. well. But he becomes. The role deep manager as well, didn't yeah, he? This, yeah, like yeah. After doing the page go thing, Wiley was setting up role deep at the so around let's the go same, back yeah. a little bit. So champ, uh, champagne dance comes out. Yeah. How did it in terms of um, the major world, the commercial world? We know it's busting up the underground. Yeah. What's it doing like in the, yeah, in the real like, world? It's doing like the early signs. It's doing well. Like, oh, it's been added to Kiss. Oh, it's, it's been added to I don't know whatever the radios like Radio One or whatever the videos come out. It's doing the numbers, or doing the numbers, well, like YouTube, it's getting played on the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. not doing the numbers, getting played on TV. It's like, it's it's gearing up, do you know what I mean? To be a a possible success, ends up coming out. It went number 12 in the charts. Yep. Which was like, for us. Really good. But in these days, like, people have to remember as well, this is a time when no one's going in there, that top nothing. Like, you actually got to go out and buy the CD or the yeah, tape. Yeah, but I mean like, People from our life, not like today when we run in the charts. Possible, yes, be yeah. These days, it's not possible. I think um, obviously we'd seen so solid do it. They were the first act of our nature to be able to break. That's why we thought we could even do it in the first place. So we've done it. We've got our little number twelve, big success for us. Not we've a done, little number twelve, it's big success. Yeah, big success. But in their world, it's like okay, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. all right. Well, we've done top of the pops. We've done all the big shows around yeah. the time. We've done Radio One. We've done so we've done a little run but it was it was a one single deal there was no follow-up but at the same time off the back of that success we have made our album we've gone right. away and just made an album the one that you posted on your twitter yeah. not too long ago <laughs> yeah so we've gone and made that album 
all the labels are talking about it. They all want to come in and meet us. It's all happening. Da, 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 da. This is exactly around the same time when the So Solid, something happens, a shooting happens at a nightclub or something. I think Asha D goes, goes jail away, in a minute. Yeah. Like, suddenly, bro, it just went dark. Like, police are shutting down. Can't book them lot. So Solid can't play nowhere. Then obviously we're getting the trickle of that because it's crews in it mm. and it's this kind of music. So suddenly, Sarah's sending us the itinerary. The itinerary is getting smaller and we're like, what's going on? Like, oh, they can't book you and oh, that race been pulled and that's happened. And then all of a sudden the, the label meetings, oh, thing he said they can't meet this week. Oh, and get cancelled. Bro, like, then we won't go to Napa for the summer because we still had our residency there. We've gone yeah. there, we're thinking, when we come back, we're going to do this album deal and just crack on. We've come back. He said, bro, like, every bit, like, all the labels are like shaky, they're scared because they're thinking it's just going to be a so, yeah. so It all fell apart. No deal. That's it. Um, and at the same time, when this is all kind of happening, you've got Wiley, who's already set up real deep. You've got Major Ace, who's kind of dabbling with uh, special delivery yep. and East, East Connection. Code, yeah. East Connection first. Yep. G's got a rinse. He's really focused on that. Like, there's things people are doing there's distractions already then all this starts unfolding then we can't get booked nowhere so why kind of. why did people if things are going well in the charts and stuff why did people start making own, their own little crews and well I say things are going well when we've had this one tune they're still well the whole summer's come past in that summer everything's crumbled in terms of like the scene and how it's positioned and the policing and the labels now ain't doing nothing and it's, so solid of a comp a band and like we're getting the the knock on effect like that's all happened mm. and that is why i think the page goes just kind of like people just like to float off and no one said anything like no one ever said right guys we're gonna leave it cool safe like we just floated okay, over okay so there. there weren't no like no. we're breaking up no 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 there was no we're breaking up like let's officially break up it was just like it just became obvious that people are focusing on these new things and then what was like you first start i will remember my day-to-day -day man them that i'm with every day on the block it's rolled in all throughout page ago is all those guys it's like it's danny weed it's like it's all the rest of them so i'm naturally like just i just slid over into roll deep do you so know then what why I mean? he was setting up roll deep i, I was you... never intentionally going to be part of it because originally it was like i'm going to set up this crew for some of them lot who ain't in page you go and there was some of the young slightly younger biggie, ones yeah. the biggie scratch, scratchy yeah so that was why he set it up it was set up for like a me because i'm in page you go it's like page you go's flying so we're setting up for the youngers basically really like mates yeah like that yeah it's just the, and all these guys are on that this is all on our block these are cousins brothers friends it's a family thing do you know what i mean so when page you go is starting to dwindle off a little bit I'm just naturally, I'm starting to do sets with these. Like, like, it's just natural for me to just go into there. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't, um, well, like there was like, we needed to do like a transfer fee. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just a natural little progression. And you over. naturally started going over there as a DJ? Or? Originally, it was more, it was more producy, to be fair. Because um, by then, I'm like, I've got a laptop again. I'm, we're starting to get really stuck into these more underground. Now we're more underground about two thousand two three. Now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's starting to really be like beats that are starting and to start to grind. craft your st actual style. Yeah, and I think so, one of the beats I would say that does stand out is probably Poltergeist. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Poltergeist would have been one. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. So it's all around that time. And, we're trying out different things. We're now now it's not really garage. Now it's starting to be this new thing. So Danny's got his sound. Um, like people can tell when it's a target beat Wiley's obviously had the esky thing he's cleaned up with that yeah so Roll Deep production wise has got a sick bass Scratchy's even like messing yeah, around yeah. and making beats and whatever like so it was kind of that and then then I'm just naturally doing a set here and there but remember Carnage is the Roll Deep DJ, DJ. Yeah. Like, so I'm not trying to I know that and as Bionics well and Bionics was about as well right? Bionics was about as well yeah, yeah but okay Bionics is Carnage Bionics is a dipper isn't it? he dips yeah, in and out yeah because he's with Kane and all that as well really. yeah yeah okay but um yeah so Car I'm, I'm conscious of like I ain't trying to just come barging in and I'm the I'm the DJ as well do you know what I mean so Carnage is the DJ I said Danny was DJing as well Danny was the DJ well, but yeah. Danny 
cared less about DJing as well. Danny's doing more producing. Carnage loves to, he want, like, that's his thing, isn't it? So everyone kind of just slipped into their roles. Plus, because I'd been around a little bit and, like, I'm, like, like a similar way, like, I'm sensible or whatever, like, I could help with, like, it just made perfect sense. Plus, this is, we're all just family. We're together every day. So, yeah, that was the kind of, that's so how that So you kind started. of joined as a producer? Yeah, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't say it was had a, la a label on it, though. It was just like, Targets with Roll Deep now. Yeah. It might, I might pop up and DJ on a radio set. I might go to a rave and DJ back to back with Marvin, Carnage. Yeah. I'm going to make beats, like, but you probably would have heard more of it coming out of the production lane but I wouldn't say it was like right we're going to have you as a producer and not a DJ or not as anything else do you know what I mean I'll just end up being manager at one point Yeah, well, um, but so yeah <laughs> let's um, right so let's pause here